Okay, it looks like we are live and alive. Welcome everybody to another rendition of Grader's Notes. And tonight we're gonna hit a pretty controversial issue, I think, uh, for the 70s. Um, and see if it holds up with the hype of the keenness of the hotness or whateverness that uh, I see prevalent in the community. But before we get into that, I am joined by three spectacular gentlemen, analysts of the highest degree, and uh, my fellow graders notes, uh, dissectors. So let's bring them in one at a time, say hello to, the, uh, to these fine gentlemen and see what they're up to, right? All right, first one coming into the uh, arena here is none other than your favorite bad man from the Badlands, Mr. Miracle Comics. How you doing hello. there, buddy? Hello, hello. So this was quite the interesting pick. Um, the title alone was as it's crazy. I don't know. I don't know. We'll get into it. It's there's a lot to talk about about this issue. Like there was some okay. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> he, I can't, he, he, he can't, wait. Can. He can't even wait for the other two guys to get in here. He just wants to start analyzing right now. No, I'm first. Me. <laughs> All right, Mr. Miracle. Dave, thanks, buddy. Okay. Uh, we will get to you. Trust me, you will have time for your say. Oh, next I know. Time, uh, next time. <laughs> the next guy <laughs> in, the progenitor of Grader's Notes, the, the Lord of the Lexicon. Uh, my my very good friend and somebody who ha is the idea man and the renaissance man here on YouTube, none other than Genome Presents. How are you, my friend? Oh, dandy. And I am further dandified here by the slip of the tongue that Dave just had there. I heard my first aboot out of him. He corrected oh, no. himself, <laughs> but it was there and it's down for everyone to see. A boot is the proper pronunciation. Wow. Hey, good to be here, everyone. Hello. Glad to enjoy my uh, hanging out with my buddies tonight. We're going to talk about a, as Dave said, a very controversially named book for the time and uh, interesting stuff there. Interesting stuff. A really cool pick. Yeah, I, I, I thought uh, this was, I mean, obviously I had a few different choices, but uh, this, this was really something from back then. And, you know, I'm sure we'll be able to ferret out our opinions very soon here. All right. I had to go last, digital. I'm sorry, by the way. Spoiler last alert. into the squared circle using wrestling terms here uh, for this gentleman because uh, we know him, we love him. Uh, again, the, what, as far as analysis goes, man, Kenny is always deep on point and poignant when he does his stuff. And, you know, obviously one of my favorite guys on the planet, a, a good friend, somebody that I, I hope I can meet someday, as long with these two gentlemen because uh, he is nothing but fun and knowledge, right? So into the squared circle, last, but really not even close to least, Kenny Comichead 8 of 4. How you doing, Hello. man? Good to see you guys. I'm here. I'm dealing with some technical issues, right? But I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm watching, I'm listening to you guys on delay, so just keep that in mind. But thank you for that intro, Roger. And I'm ready to get down to business, man. Oh, you always are, my friend. You always are. All right. So today we are going to tackle, as Mr. Miracle, I think, showed a preview. And if obviously if you, if you see our show for any length of time, it is indeed Marvel Spotlight 12 with this very, very controversial character, the son of Satan himself. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, Grader's Notes, we're going to shout out the chat, but let's let's do a recap for you newbies out there. I don't think there are too many around, though. We take the comic. Uh, hopefully, we've all had it for a little while. We read it, and then we sort of categorize different aspects of it. We look at the cover, right? And we, we give our opinion about how well that works. We look at the story and say, hey, is this does this hold up? Does this, does this make sense? You know, did we like it, et cetera? We look at the interior art, you know, what, was it funky anatomy? Was there backgrounds in there? Or did they just like just explode their pen all over the, the page, right? 
that anything is possible. Then we look at the concept, the kind of amorphous uh, uh, category. You know, what was behind the creation of this comic? Was it uh, for financial reasons? Was it for creative reasons? Was it, you know, some some writer trying to vent them? You know, what 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 was the rationale behind it? And then we come in and we do a little bit of an encapsulation and see what the overall grade are. And after each category, you in the chat, yes, you there, look in the mirror. You are the fifth grader. And we're going to ask your opinion because really your opinion is the one that is always right here. All right. So I'm going to go through the chat real quick, guys. We got 13 guys here in the arena. Uh, let's see who was here first. Ruben Guzman was here tailgating previous to the threat <laughs> as, uh, as before we opened it up. As was my friend Ryan, Magic Lasso, who's got a new contest, fabulous contest up. Moderator extraordinaire Mark Knapp ate dinner early to be here to moderate for you guys. That's the love of this community, guys. That's the sacrifices that everybody does for your entertainment value, for your entertainment. I know my, and my uh, thank you for being here, Mark, for my benefit. Of course, we got Mr. Miracle in here. Yes, his, his, his Canadian Wi-Fi works somehow. James Gallegos from New Mexico. <laughs> Again, he is ubiquitous. He is everywhere. He is omnipresent. I see him in every chat. I don't know how he does it. Uh, speaking of omnipresent, Slim Comics. Is there a video that Slim hasn't commented on? I've never seen it. Uh, Z Collects, my buddy, how you doing? Uh, man, big, big uh, lover of this community. He's always trying to grow the community. Bill, Comic Mag Musing, he has not melted. No, the Arizona heat does not get this man down. He does 22 push-ups every day and still here smiling. The man from Missouri, Tim, the comic collector, who is still going out there hunting. Unfortunately, Mississippi, no good. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think I saw... Yeah, I saw Jackson Roy Kirk again, my buddy from New Orleans. I'm glad you're you're doing you're doing okay down down there. Uh, I know the hurricane barely missed you. Patrick Wall, another chat superstar. As speaking of another chat superstar, Joe four seven 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 one says, "Hail Santa." That's interesting. He said that. I'll I'll tell you why later. And we have the most fantastic of ladies up from here, from my neighbor in Tennessee, Caroline Lady Fantastic. And Stay Puff, Sean, Floridian Extraordinaire, great shows on Saturdays and Sundays. And guys, I think, unless I miss somebody, I think that is everybody in here in the arena at this time. We, man, we, Roger's we, charged up tonight. Yeah, man, I, I am. I'm, I, I, I eat dinner. I'm exercised. I am ready to go. <laughs> and, of course, it's my pick, so uh, I have to be a little bit. Oh, hold on. Uh, one of our alumni just stepped in. Oh, really oh. in. Thank you for being here, sir. Thank you for always being ready, prepared to come in just in case one of us is knocked out. All right. All right. Let's get going, guys. Marvel Spotlight 12, Son of Satan. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna start it off with the cover because again, that's the first thing you see, right? Yeah. I'm just going to go to my right, maybe your left. I'm not sure how that goes on here, and start with the the again the favorite curmudgeon here in the crowd. But you know what? You gotta love him because he gives it to you straight as an arrow, guys. None other than Mister Miracle Comics over there somewhere. <laughs> Dave, what did, what did you think about this cover? Uh, what, before you read the comic, you just saw the cover. Let us know what you thought about it and give us a little grade uh, on it. Okay, well, you know, definitely eye-catching cover, right? It's got that flaming horses, lots of action going on. Um, it's a little over inked, in my opinion. There's quite some dark, dark spots that you know, they shouldn't be so dark if there's so much flames around, but that's okay. You know, I think that was a little bit weird and odd. But, you know, all of this stuff, all of this stuff here, what do you focus on? That, that name. Like, 
you, I can tell it. Can you still remember what was on the cover? No, I'm <laughs> thinking about this name, right? Like, dang, man. I mean, I don't know. When I, when I first heard about Son of Satan, I was like, for real? Like, I grew up as, you know, a little Catholic kid. And, you know, that was like, like, what? You can, you know, my dad would have not bought me this comic. I, I'm sure that it wasn't a big seller in the Bible Belt. That's for sure. Um, wow, right? Like, that, I, I don't think it would fly today as a as a comic book. So I don't know what Roy Thomas was thinking. I don't know, um, you know, what Gary Frederick was thinking, what Herb Tempe is thinking. And some of Satan, sorry. Um, <laughs> I just, it just <laughs> brings me to that title, right? title, right? Like, previous to this, it was Ghost Rider. So, like, Ghost Rider was on there. He was flaming. He was cool. He had some tiebacks to Satan and stuff like that. So, okay, you know, he was, like, skirting the thing. I know that the Comic Code Authority kind of loosened their grip on stuff in 1971, right? And that's when they were allowed to start doing things like monsters again, right? Before, before 1971, the Comic Code Authority had put the kibosh on, you know, any kind of monsters and killings and anything with terror in the in the name or any kind of you know demonic stuff was all right out of right like you could not do this you couldn't have the wolfman you couldn't have frankenstein anymore right so marvel was just hitting it with these monster characters right and they were they had some good ones and uh, some that like really took off right and ghost rider was one of them so of course they're you know oh how can we keep selling with this monster stuff and I think they went just a little bit over the line with this one, you know, coming up with the title "The Son of Satan." Are we getting a grade for the cover anytime soon? Well, I okay, okay, yeah, so I'm allowed to talk. Give me my my time. <laughs> Am I rambling too much? But the the title itself is just so striking. I do like you know the alliteration they use, ominous origin. Of course, he's going to be ominous. Um, the cover is good. The colors are good. It's a little over ink for my taste. Um, there's some good backgrounds, and I like that they use it in grayscale, so it kind of brings that the uh, horse and uh, chariot forward in that sort of sense. Um, you know, Herb, he's he's a player. Not sure I like, uh, you know, how Damien Hellstorm or like the whole Son of Satan things. Like, I guess I'm just used to him drawing like those big, huge Hulk guys, right? So when I see him, he's pretty muscly, but he's still pretty thin, kind of. Kind of superhero seems a little odd for me, but yeah, overall, I thought the cover probably would have made me, you know, at least take this off the rack and look inside and see what it was about. Um, if you know, even if I wasn't allowed to buy it, it you know, probably well, I was less than one then, so um, yeah, I uh gave the cover a three, three, oh, yeah, it got. It has good, uh, like it's everything's anatomy. There's it draws you in. There's great color. It's just that title is so like wow, right? I, I had to give it less points for that title. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, you know, you can see guys, right? Mr. Miracle, he he, he was going <laughs> to the concept. He was going to the <laughs> he was going everywhere. That's the excitement level that he has for this. That's the verb. That's the Sorry, visual guys. that he has, right? Did I totally kind of like go off the rails a little bit there? Was I was I metarogging it? <laughs> oh, is, is that a verb now? Metarogging. Okay. <laughs> Metarog. Um sorry, it's just it's really it, like when you, especially, like, <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. Oh, miracle. Never change, man. Never change. Let me tell you, never change. All right. So we gave that a three, right? Yep. All right. Okay. Let's, let's go a little further south, but not quite as south as West Virginia and see what Kenneth Comic Hit 84. I love to say that in the Southern accent. I don't have no idea why. <laughs> has to say about this. Okay. Controversial cover, Kenny? Let us know what you think. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, and sorry if I'm, my timing is off. Usually my timing is impeccable, you know what I'm saying? But I was listening on a delay. Um, so, like Mr. Miracle pointed out, it does say the word Satan on the cover. This is true. And 
it is the focal point of the cover. If I was to critique this thing, because I think it's a very critiquable cover, you know, in my opinion, I think um, I think it's very busy. You know, I think a, a staple of a what makes an effective a good comic book cover is there should be a clear focal point, a hero, a villain, a battle, something. And I don't feel like this cover really has it. I think if if anything, the horses are like the focal point of uh, the cover. And like your lead character is kind of off to the side here. He's one of the smallest figures on the on the page, on the cover. So I think that was a bit of a miss. The, the focal point though of the book is the word Satan. I think they knew that, you know, they leaned into it being a controversial title and the design of that trade dress and that header is pretty legit. Uh, that's maybe one of the high marks of the cover for me is the layout of that trade dress. Um, because when you get down into the artwork, I do think it's heavily inked, like Mr. Miracle mentioned. I think the fire is pretty poorly uh, drawn, <laughs> you know? The, the fire looks very cheesy, and there isn't even that much of it. So I think, you know, considering the, the, the material, the, uh, you know, uh, the subject matter of this book and this character, you should. Oh, oh, we lost them. We lost them, guys. Ooh. Oh. Kenny's having some problems today. Yeah, he's having some problems today. The sensors got him. Yep. <laughs> the sensors got warned him. <laughs> oh, boy. He said the S word too many times. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, let me. <laughs> Let me let me send him an IG message real quick. Uh, oh, if he knows, or if he's still talking. Yeah, I'm gonna say, he's Penny, he's, oh, there, oh, he's coming! He's coming! He's coming! Quick, there give it grade. Give it grade. Am I, am I back in? You're back. You're in. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me? Finish up. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this cover. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, we hear you fine. 2.5 cover because of, you know, those things I said before. I do think the concept of the cover and the layout is a win, but the execution is a bit of a miss. 2.5. Nice, nice. I'm glad you made it back for the great. How'd that go? <laughs> um, all right. 2.5 and a three. So yeah, fair to midland, maybe a little bit better. Now let's go to Genome and see if he agrees that this is a fair to midland or maybe it's something that belongs in hell itself. <laughs> what do you think, Gino? Yeah, I don't actually have a physical copy. Sorry, guys. I don't have LCSs like you civilized folks do. But sure. um, uh, so I'll have to either get a visual prop or I'll just start winging it. But people have kind of seen it. Yeah, Dave's got it easily me right here, if you will. Um, can you hold that just a little bit closer, Dave, if possible? Thank you. Okay, first off, spoiler alert, this is my least favorite part of the book, is this cover. Um, but it's not bad. There's some good stuff going on. That trade dress is smoking, man. That looks good. It's too bad it got wasted on a character we never really heard of barely afterwards. But I think it looks good, and it, and it fits. They even, they even took the time to put some flames in there, right? So that's just a little extra. Uh, so they went all out there. Uh, I do like, um, like Kenny's saying, the, the concept is pretty cool, man. You got like this flaming chariot steed. You got the damsel in distress. You got some hero striking a, a pose. You got, you know, civilians fleeing in terror, you know, Godzilla style. So it's a cool concept. I'm not sure how well that works for an introduction to a character though. And it is, it's a really busy cover, man. It's, it's not real clear what's going on. Is he abducting this woman? Maybe, maybe they want to keep it ambiguous like that. Uh, but so, you know, it's got Satan on there. It's got hell in there in big letters. So they definitely are trying to, to pull some controversial strings to get people to buy. Right. Um, the horses are interesting. It's like, are they part lizard? What's with that back tail? I don't <laughs> get it. They should just give him fire tails or something and been done with it. But, they made him kind of weird looking, but I don't know. Once again, it draws the eye. 
unfortunately, a lot of the execution here is pretty poor. Uh, flames were already talked about. We'll get into it. That dude at the bottom on the right, what is he got going on over his eyes? It's like two sausages. Is that supposed to be a furrowed brow? I don't get it. It's it's hard to see. It just looks or it looks like two fingers sitting left there. It's just weird, man. Very cro magnet. And um there's a lot of it like little anatomy problems there. The way his leg goes into his thigh there just looks really wonky. Uh she, her back has been snapped <laughs> like a twig right there, obviously. I do love her hands though. Her hands look so good. They're like real slim and feminine. And um and he's got the distance just about right with him. But yeah, her, her back is broken. Um, the horses look a little bit funky here and there. Uh, I didn't have too bad a problem with inks because, you know, big lights will throw weird shadows all over the place. But it is weird how the middle horse is really, like, dark and the out ones are, are really light. So, yeah, what are you going to do? I, I, um, I can give this a 2.5. I don't think it's horrible by any stretch of the imagination. It's just a little too busy, I think. Uh, I do like that they gave um, a background to it which is kind of surprising. It could have been just a flat freaking colored background, but they actually have a lot going on there too. So does some things. All right. Does some things I don't like. So kind of middle of the road. Um, yeah. Give it a two, 2.5. 2. 5. 2. 5. Serviceable. Okay. 5. Serviceable. Our first serviceable of the stream first. right there. We got no, we got no, I got no comic book guy. Comic book guy. Not a comic book guy. Yeah. 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 Kenny's. But, but well, I'm sure he'll, he'll, he's probably working on his, um, on his, um, you know, Wi-Fi. So, all right. So I guess I'm bringing up the rear here. Um, no horse jokes, please. Um, so cover. Yeah. Uh, I think you guys did a, of course, fantastic job of nailing, uh, the, the technical aspects. Um, I will say a few things that, uh, obviously that, that Satan logo, you know, if you're, if you're a kid, right. And, you know, you, you like those monster movies and those Saturday morning creature features. And you see that, you're like, I wonder if I can sneak this by the parents, you know? So I think as far as I appeal, as far as appeal to the audience that they're trying to um, essentially sell this comic book to or appeal to, I think that's a home run. The flames inside the red there. See that? That is just, that's great stuff. And even notice even the banner is red and then the spotlight is yellow. So they have the same flame and count um, background uh, going on in the, even in the banner and the title as in the trade dress of Satan. So that alone, that, that gets a pretty much a close to a five to, you know, for me. Um, you guys are right. This, this cover is very busy um, and Trip does this a lot, you know, he tries to pack a gin sometimes a lot into panels and it, it gets a little bit too cramped in there. But I, I like the fact that, that he has like a lot of the story elements in here. Okay. Uh, he's got the, the demon uh, horse uh, chariot. He's got uh, son of Satan on there with a, a lady. He did have a lady on there toward the end. Uh, of course, no Johnny blaze. And then you have all these, these visuals of, the netherworld, fire, hell, this guy, of course, pronouncing uh, or opining that he's not even human, okay? So, you know, you, you have a lot of elements here that really, uh, it, it really uh, uh, has an attraction to those monster and those um, buyers of comics that at this point, like Mr. Miracle was saying, we're just coming out of the comics code, very, very strict guidelines against zombies and vampires, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, I, it is a bit dark, but I think that's on purpose. I think, I think they want to, he, Trim sort of wants to convey that this is, that this is a comic that is not going to be a happy ending comic, that it's going to have a lot of, um, you know, spiritual or um, uh, satanic kind of overtones. And he wants to make that kind of prevalent with all these darks here and this guy yelling. The store, the horses are a bit funky, but you know they're from hell, so who knows, you know what kind of hybrid they are or constructs or whatever. And the lady's obviously in distress, and you don't know if he's a hero or a villain. He's very morally ambiguous on the cover. So yeah, the flames are a little eh, so so, but I think the concept of the cover is is really well done, and that that trade dress is. 
off the charts good. So I agree with Miracle on this. I give it a three. I think this is better than serviceable. Oh, uh, let's see here. And Kenny's still trying to, to figure Persona out. Persona non grata. All right, I got you. Okay, yeah, Persona non grata. All right, so at least we got that first one in. So now let's kick it over to the chat, all right? Um, I, I think I forgot to, to say that the grading uh, scale is one to five with halves or zero, I suppose, if it's really just – you know, blank paper, right? Um, one to five with half. So you can put a 1.5, 3.5, whatever you may, may want to do. You've seen the cover. So you certainly can have an opinion on this uh, particular category. So let us know what you think. One to five. Is it something that belongs in the netherworld or is it more uh, toward the heavenly uh, sphere uh, as far as art-wise goes? Uh, let us know what you think while we discuss among ourselves. Sorry, I had to pull the chat up there. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Yeah, we always like those chat grades coming in. Absolutely. I don't know, I don't know if it was, I don't think the busyness of the cover bothered me. I think, I think a lot of the busyness, it's kind of a little deceptive because of all the light and shadow that's going on in yeah. here. Right, so it's not as busy as it, it looks a lot busier than it actually is, but yeah, the anatomy doesn't bother me. I think you know, trimpy has got good anatomy, he's definitely like the workhorse of Bronze Age. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, the, the, the funny thing is that this this particular, um, you know, Trimp, we, he's known for the Hulk, you know, that, that yeah. is his claim to fame, you know, and definitely you can see the Trimp faces here, you know. That they have, yeah. they have a little more curvature on the brows and things like that. Very, very almost like Gino was saying, almost Cro Magnon like. That's a trimp kind of uh, trope there. I really um, didn't need like the big horse's butt shot either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he could have, he could have turned him to the side. Could have turned him to the side a little bit. Um, but I think, I think Miracle, you made a good point. I think that we're used to him doing the bulkier characters, the mm -hmm. muscle bound characters, and. I don't know. His 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 skinnier characters are a little bit wonky, just not very impressive, shall we say? Yeah, and yeah, we'll get into the interior. Yeah, Kenny, you feeling better? Kenny, Kenny, he's still on delay. You feeling better, Kenny? I don't think he can hear us. <laughs> he's totally out of it. All right. <laughs> How do we how do we do for chat grades in there? Um, you know, can you do the? Uh, are you doing it already? Yeah, I'm doing it right now. Okay, all right. <laughs> we got some we got some weird weird grades here. Oh, right. I got it. I had to yes. make one four by five. I hope you can hear me. I'm on a delay. We can hear I'm you. Hearing you from the past or the future. Can you hear me? No. Yes. <laughs> yes, we yeah, can hear, hear you. <laughs> We hear you now. Stop speaking. <clears throat> All right. Got the grades there, Gino? Yep. Got the grade, I should say. Sure do. Audio. Go ahead. <laughs> I just look at it. Somebody. This is going to be a fun one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Uh, today's chat actually went a little above and beyond. Uh, actually scored in at a 3.5. So wow. 0.5 above everybody. <laughs> Yeah, it, it is. It does draw you in, and then and that title doesn't throw everybody off. But like I said, I was yeah. a good Catholic boy. Yes. <laughs> that wasn't. That wasn't it. I was like, oh, don't say that. You can mm -hmm. say whatever you know the f word or whatever, but don't say that. Well, it's in the Bible. So <laughs> if it's in the Bible, you should be able to see it. Say it, right? Yeah, but it's like you know, my dad definitely would not let me buy this comic. I would no, no, I agree. With that. <laughs> she would be like, oh, no. All right, Kenny, Kenny says his delay is 30 seconds. Okay, nope, no problem, Kenny. We will work with that, okay? <laughs> Means we can insult him for 30 seconds. I know. He has a comeback. He'll have to sit there and keep smiling um, while we're doing it, too. All right, we had a few more people come into the chat, so let's, let's shout them out real quick here. We got Beta Ray Jim, uh, who has made some really nice videos lately. Everybody, 
Mark, put, definitely put him in there so people can sub him up. A newer member of the community, uh, but um, has a great omnibus collection. And we have Yeah, Pope. give me a 30-second warning before it's my time. Gotcha. Pope Paribus is in here. Sleepy Hellstrom. Nice ring to it. <laughs> nice one. Cardstock Variant. Welcome. Great to have you here. Oh, Damien, Sleepy Reader 666. He says, story elements on the covers. That's why I love old covers. Me too. Patrick Wall, how you doing, buddy? Hey, Kevin, Superpower Review is in here. Good to see ya. And I think that is it. So thanks for joining us, guys. I really appreciate you guys being here for Greater's Notes because, let me tell you, these guys are hard working, right? All right. So next up is the let's let's do the story next. Let's get away from the art for a second. All right. Let's go to the story. Um, story by Mike Friedrich. No, Gary. Was it Gary Friedrich? Gary Friedrich, right? Who also wrote Ghost Rider. So keep that in mind, right? When you when you look when you when you think about the the time. Yeah, thanks for joining us, guys. Yeah, <laughs> he's way back. <laughs> um, so story, Gino, let's start with you because I, Kenny, I think if I start with him, you know, I'm going to go eat dinner and come back and he'll still be back. <laughs> So let's start with you on the story and then we'll go to Kenny next, okay? Uh, what did you think about this? Is this, you know, war and peace or is this something that, uh, you know, you wouldn't uh, buy off of the, one of those blurbs off those Chinese restaurant fortune cookies what do you think well well this, this story is a little bit tough to figure out and not that the story is complicated i just can't figure out how much i like it <laughs> and uh and why i can't figure out why kenny's laughing about it but um he's laughing at half an hour, half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so um the story is interesting um let me get this right off my chest it's really stiff the dialogue is super stiff there's a ton <clears throat> of exposition here every power that's used is explained you know that kind of trope it's not necessarily first issue itis but it's very similar to that uh, but if you can get past that there's some pretty cool storytelling elements to be had here it starts off with two indians <laughs> I, love, I love i love reading 70s books man they always had to throw some indian characters in there um but uh so you know you have two indians that are basically held captive by the son of Satan. So he comes right out the gate as a bad guy, right? Then with a page, you see, well, maybe he has a moral center and a compass. And then halfway through the book, is he doing something heroic? He's saving two people from his father. And then at the end, he dumps those same two people off in the middle of the desert to possibly die on their own. So he's really like, I don't want to say anti-hero because he's not a hero, right? At least from what we can read from this book. He's just very ambiguous, right? He's morally ambiguous. And I kind of dig that, man, because, you know, it's always so easy to side, especially back in this generation of comics, you know, it's like heroes were good, bad guys were bad, right? There's very few guys who, who did the middle ground, maybe the cosmic beings, but you didn't barely ever see them back then anyway. Um, cool character, man. Cool idea for a character. And we don't know what he's about. We don't know why he hates his father. You know, his father seems to disdain him. Uh He's, there's mention made of him being not of his spirit, but of his flesh. So, you know, like, like the old Olympian guys used to come down and, and breed with us mere mortals, you know, and they make demigods like Hercules and things like that. Kind of a similar uh, vein in there, I think. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's got some really cool narrative elements about it. it. It's a little bit sluggish. It's a little bit wordy. Uh, but for the most part, I think it lays down some pretty interesting things here. And I would, read more of the character. I would like to learn a bit more about him because I think it ends on a really cool note. It doesn't really tell you anything, but it gave you a satisfying conclusion to the story. Like the whole story was him going to piss his father off and he succeeded in that. And we have a whole other side about him to learn. Like who is this, this preacher he turns into the daytime. He's apparently a devil werewolf, right? And at night <laughs> he transforms. Um, cool. It's just that the dialogue is pretty it's not bad. It's just really wooden. It's, it's kind of a product of the times too. And hearing the bikers try to speak tough guy talk when you're using comic book language is always, <laughs> you know, what you can do about that. But 
So I'm going to go ahead and give this uh, a 3.5. Uh, I found the character pretty intriguing, interesting. Uh, woody, wooden dialogue, notwithstanding, it was a pretty cool story, I thought. So 3.5, uh, you know, clean up the dialogue and take some of the couple paragraphs out of there, and this thing would be a, a hoot. So Very nicely go. done there, Gina. Very nicely done. You, you actually hit on a few things I didn't think about. Um, excellent. Excellent analysis. Excellent. Uh, 3.5. You know, I, I'm kind of surprised you thought so highly of it, but yeah, okay. Kenny, I'm giving you your 30 second warning. Okay. Because you're next, brother. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see when he gets it. Uh, let me shout out a few guys who just got in, who just came in. From Heroes to Icon, Jason, welcome. And Warlord, welcome. Welcome into Greater's Notes. Stand ready if you've read this issue because your chat, your time for Graydon is coming up. Kenny. Okay, and as soon as you full screen me, I'll just, once I'm full screen, I'll know it's my cue. I'll just go off the visual cue. Okay. Because <laughs> you just said my thing. Kenny, your turn. So let me just jump into it. <laughs> Story. Um, I thought that it was a pretty good read, man. I thought that they were good. Um, I like the overall story beats. It was like uh, three main story chunks. The introduction of uh, the son of Satan when he, hold on, I gotta plug my laptop in. The introduction of son of Satan when he's dealing with these uncooperative dudes um, trying to find the whereabouts of the girl. So there's that initial exchange and he summons his powers. You get a sense of what kind of power this guy has. He brings the the horses into play, the chariot, right? Um, he announces he's the son of Satan. So cool little introduction, you know, uh, one third of the book. Then in the middle, you get your um, go after the girl who supposedly is, you know, maybe possessed by his dad, Satan. And he has to deal with the bikers that have you know, held her captive. So perfect way for him to flex his stuff. Cause he didn't want to give his full wrath of, of powers on the first batch of guys. Cause they were, he was just trying to get info, but these scoundrels on the motorcycles, it was cool to see him really go for it. Um, and a nice little fun note of his character to show that he's not full evil, but you can tell he's from maybe H-E double hockey sticks, you know what I'm saying? Is when he saves the girl, he's like, now at last we can talk, my dear. You are very beautiful. I pity the fact that I haven't time to linger with you and perhaps whisper words of love into your ear. Which I thought was cool because he's like, it's showing that lust, you know, one of the seven deadly sins. And then, you know, the ending part with his dad, it was okay, but I found it to overall be kind of uneventful. Um, but it was interesting. I liked the moral ambiguity of the character, okay? And that made for a compelling read. The, the words, and I know I'm about to wrap up, the words were wooden. I agree in some of that, but it was also kind of throwback and poetic. And I enjoyed much of the dialogue in the book, in fact. So I gave the story a strong three, brother. Three. Wow, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Excellent. Excellent. Strong three. Strong. Not too bad. Excellent. Excellent. Good, <coughs> points. good, good, very good points in there, uh, I think. Um, you know, I guess I'm up next, and I guess I'll start by saying that I have very, I am also pretty much ambivalent or confused about what my grade's going to be even at this point about this story because it kind of tore me into two places, and I'll tell you why in a second here. Um, I think, I agree, I think the character is well done, right? Um, he, he, he kind of has um, fit, you know, he's obviously two different characters in one, right? He has the demonologist, good guy, um, passive, and then you have, you know, the, the hide, right? Which is the aggressive, the powerful, the uh, uh, larger than life with, you know, bare chested and a pentagram on his chest character. So, you know, you really have a dichotomy there 
as far as the, the how what what the, the the two characters and how they don't they don't uh, mesh right and again this is Gary Friedrich so it's kind of Ghost Rider esh right uh, not to a much more uh, um, shall we say expansive degree a much more different in 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 as far as their their separation. Um, I like the plot of the story, but there are a lot of plot holes in the story, right? And that is where I'm going to focus because you guys sort of hit the other stuff. Um, he he is he is trapped at night. He becomes son of Satan at night, right? And he told these guys again. We don't see this, but if you if you read um, Ghost Rider one and uh, two, that was three, by the way, <laughs> two. <laughs> um, you would know that. He came there to help them, but he said, well, before I do that, no matter what I tell you, do not untie me at night. So, of course, they untie him at night, right, which is kind of borrowed from this old Twilight Zone episode called The Howling Man, okay, in which they tell him, you know, they tell a, a guy who's in this keep, don't do, don't, no matter what he says, don't open. Of course, he opens it, lets out, you know, the, the bad guy. Um and one of the guys says, hey, I, I noticed a tint of evil in you, but I, if you notice that, why'd you let him out? You know, I mean, to me, if I notice a tint of evil, I'm not letting the guy out. Right. But anyway, you let him out. And then he goes on with this diatribe about I'm going to burn your whole village if, you know, I could do that. But, you know, I need the information. And then, you know, they say, kill me. And he's like, no, because I need I need to know what you know. They don't know anything. These guys don't know anything. And then he says, you better be telling the truth about that. I don't know anything. Right. So he goes off to, to find uh, Johnny Blaze and this witch woman character. Right. And then he, he summons the, the, the demon horde there, the demon horses. He says, this is the only thing I can I can use to get where I need to. Then he come, he just all of a sudden segues. He, he kind of tri he teleports in front of these biker gangs with Roxanne Simpson. How he knew they were there and why he had to do that, I have no idea. He just said he didn't care about anything else but getting these two people and, and, and horning in on Satan, right? And then he goes there to show off his powers. You know, he just decimates this biker gang, which, like everybody said, has really, like, wooden and weird dialogue. And then... After that, he doesn't get any information, really, from anybody. Then he shows up in this cavern and just walks down it. So what did he need the horses for? He just walked down the cavern. I mean, again, a lot of plot holes when you start thinking about it. Why did he stop those biker gangs and Roxanne Tim Simpson? Why did he have the horses? Because it's a visual, guys, but it's a plot hole. It's not necessary. It didn't wind the story correctly into what the necess necessities those were. Uh, then he does go down, and then he uses his trident, which is made of netheranium, which the devil cannot take, or Satan cannot take, but his imps can, right? So he can send his imps and his demons to get him, but heaven forbid he come close to that trident. You know, not um, not all powerful, but very powerful Satan can't do anything with that trident. Um, and then he, of course, starts just wailing in on Satan. And then there's one little part here, and I'll end with this, where he really insults Satan, right? Um, where he says, he says this, ah, the truth is painful to you. You now seek male servants rather than beautiful women. Yes, age is creeping up on you to think that now you seek raw power rather than the fulfillment of your unquenchable lust. So he's telling him he's an old man. He can't do it anymore. He can't hack it. He can't do, you know, he doesn't have the libido he used to. Really strange kind of dialogue here, but he's really laying it to Satan there. Um, again, the story, I think the plot is good. The, wood, the, the dialogue is not good at all. Too many plot holes. That being said, I still enjoyed it, okay? It still was a cool story because you got to see his powers and you got to see that, you know, that, that really evil part of him or, you know, supposedly evil, but really I think it was more of a, just a threat and bravado than anything else. So I agree with, I think, Kenny, right? Uh, I give it a three. And that's it. Three, three, three. Yeah. Hmm. It's flawed, flawed, but still entertaining. I still liked it. I mean, so that's why I was torn, you know, because 
I like it, but I saw a lot of problems with it as well. It's like dating a stripper. Yep. <laughs> like dating a stripper. Well, I've never done that, but maybe. <laughs> All right. You like to look. There's a lot Mr. of Mr. Miracle, you're bringing up the rear here only in the sense that you're last. But uh, what did you think about that story? Give us your usual Mr. Miracle thoroughness. Well, this is like this. This is an unusual kind of. Uh, you know, first issue story in that, like, like, yes, they have all the, you know, the first issue tropes. These are my powers. This is where I came from. This is a little bit of my background. Right. Um, but it's like the reason there's so many plot holes and they keep referring to it here in the comic in the little, uh, like writer's notes that are always in the kind of the corner panels, mm -hmm. you know, see ghost rider number two for the rest of this story. See, you know, wait till Ghost Rider 3 for the continuation. So it seemed really like it was his first appearance, but it was like a chapter of a Ghost Rider story, right? It wasn't his own book kind of true. deal. Like, Very true. Really, yes. like Johnny Blaze was in it and everything, and it just continues from Ghost Rider to this to the next Ghost Rider. And that was kind of weird. Like it was like, wait a minute, is this his comic or is this just Ghost Rider's? like a, a too long of a explanation for like to put in you know in the Ghost Rider comics so they made his own comic like it was kind of weird you have to be the star of your own comic at all the times right like so yeah they're gonna bring Johnny Blaze in but they didn't bring Ghost Rider in, which was good right like I don't think you want to have Ghost Rider come in here and show up son of Satan right Damien Hellstrom um yeah, it, it was. It did have its definite plot holes in here, like, and and like it's a real disappointing because man, like you said, I was going after this this title, this title, this title, and I was uh, a little bit harping on it. But then you get in here and it's like, man, this is like, uh, what was Gino saying? Like Tarantino, uh, you know, dialogue. Are you gonna bark all day, doggy? You're gonna bite. Like he's got these guys begging him to kill him, begging him. You know, go ahead, do it. I dare you. Like, do it. Just do your thing. I dare you to kill us. No, no, I wouldn't even tell you. Dare it. Go on, kill us. Get it over with. Go on, do it. Kill us. And he doesn't. I'm like, wait, this is like the son of Satan, or no? And even at like even after he gets his information and everything, he doesn't kill him. Like I'm like, okay, wait a minute. And then he goes and saves the girl. I'm like, wait a minute, is this guy a good guy or a bad guy? Because I mean, like he kind of, you know wraps her up a bit when he's talking to her but or the one girl and then he goes to hell and he saves the other two johnny blaze and stuff and it's like that's weird and of course like I, I didn't mind like he's got this special trident that can keep you know big red at bay there and uh big red. <laughs> you know oh, but you know that like that's a very bronze age kind of 70s thing to do i was okay with that i expect that kind of thing i expect some cheese dialogue the bikers, you know, their dialogue was cheese for sure, but that's the way that bikers always read in all of these Bronze Age comics, right? Uh, Son of Satan's dialogue, he, they didn't get too bogged down in the first issue itis stuff. Like he did, uh, you know, I'm trying to say these are my powers in this, but that was most of that happened in the first couple pages, right? And it wasn't, and then we kind of went on with the story, and it wasn't until he kind of meets up with satan later in the book that we get more of his powers and he kind of says a few more things that he could do and stuff so i like that that it didn't just get totally bogged down and with you know look what i can do look what i can do and look what i can do and look where my girlfriend is and look where i'm from right it wasn't just that kind of a story there, there was story in here even if it was more of a ghostwriter story in like a you know you could have just added this into you know the ghostwriter Anyways, they like I said, they wanted to make another monster character and have a success like Ghost Rider, but I don't know, picking this guy. <laughs> Anyways, story wise, it was okay. The dialogue didn't bother me. I just found it weird. And so I gave it a two point five as well. Like it, it it did the job. It introduced us to Son of Satan. And, you know, there was some glaring plot points, but there always is in these Bronze Age comics. And there's always cheesy dialogue, but it's just the fact that it just felt to me like it was just like I could have just flipped a page in a Ghost Rider story and picked up on here, I found it weird. 
for a first issue, like an introduction kind of deal. Yeah. So two and a half. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, that's why I said that it, it did start in Ghost Rider 1 and 2, and then it sort of, it sort of diverged there, and then it goes back to Ghost Rider for a while. It's Again, when you have the same writer doing two series that do crossovers, they sometimes don't realize that us here, mere mortals, are not clairvoyant. And unless we had that issue, we don't yeah. know, uh, you know all these nuances. So you have to do a little bit of a better job with those plot holes and fill in those gaps. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Yeah. So that was 2.5, right? Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So we got through two categories with Kenny. He says he might be out for the rest of the um, stream, unfortunately, but we'll see. All right. So let's kick it over to the chat. Now, even if you didn't read the story, if you want to base your opinion on what how, what we discussed here, yeah, Biggie's in the chat. Um, he says his blood pressure's a little high, so I told him to take care of himself. Um, hopefully, you know, there's no Kirby involved here, Biggie, so you should be fine. Um, <laughs> that was a little joke. Uh, <laughs> so even if you didn't read the story, we'd still like, you know, based on, if you, if you want to, you can base it on what we said here. Or if you did read it, all the better. Give us what you think of the story. Is this something that, you know, holds up? I mean, or were those plot holes really bothersome? Or like Genome, did you think that, you know, those those concepts and the flow of the story and those little um, um, different plot, the, different, the way that the story went along, uh, which flowed pretty well, was that, you know, what you liked best of it? Um, one to five or zero to five with halves in between. Let us know while we discuss little nuances ourselves. Little uh, nerd interjection there. Uh, you mentioned uh, just a little joke. Uh, that's from Star Trek uh, Trouble with Tribbles, uh, spoken by Chekhov, by the way, and rebuked by Spock. So, What's that? Just a little joke. Very little. Very little, yes. You got the trust me on this. I remember that. <laughs> I, I like Star Trek. It's okay. It's okay. It's not like Star Wars. Wars. Course, but, Star Wars, but I, I like the old one. Well, I, I have the opposite opinion. I think Star Trek and it, Star Wars is okay. Yeah. But anyway, I'm in the minority there, of course. But. Star Trek's good. I, I've watched them all and all the next generation ones. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, Genome is reviewing them. So um, if, yeah, if you guys right. are Star or Trekkies, you got to go and check out his. Reviews. Of course, the first season of Star Trek Next Generation is uneven, to say the least. Um, but it gets better. But it's, it's the season three. Yeah. It takes off. Yeah. I agree. Pretty, yeah. Agreed. Um, yeah. Okay. So the story here, I mean, honestly, when I when I, I read this way back when, like probably mid-70s, and I think I wrote it, I read it again maybe 10 years ago. And I, I, when I first read it, I thought it was like really good. I mean, I was like, wow. And then, cause I wasn't, I wasn't re I wasn't looking for, you know, the rationale behind it. I was just looking at, you know, you get to fight Satan with that trident, and, you know, cool. You know, he's busting heads, he's melting guns, you know, but when you look at it, you know, in and in, with a microscope, you can definitely see the warts. The, um, <clears throat> I, I think Kenny actually was the one that mentioned this too. It was a three-part story, though, which is they kept to, the, you know, the comic idea. I mean, it did have a definite beginning, and he began his quest, and he had his trial to get to the quest and get to the quest, and then in the end, he kind of got his quest finished, you know what I mean? So he, he pissed off his father. It seemed to be his only goal, uh, at least toward the end, which is, that was a little odd. <laughs> yeah. And you're right, it, it, he got there pretty quickly and easily, but, um, so yeah, there was, like, you know, the typical, like, fair of storytelling at least was attempted in this. But, I mean, think about reading the Ghost Rider comic, because now you're like, oh, when we last this Ghost Rider, he was captured by Satan. All of a sudden, in issue three, you're like, wait a minute, how did he get free? And we'll be a little more read, you know, Marvel Star, right. like, whoa. Yep. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Right? And, and I think what they did is that since Ghost Rider was in Marvel Spotlight 11, they restarted Spotlight with 12, thinking, well, 
you know, people will think, well, sort of Ghost Rider fans would, would already be ready to pick up the issue. But if they should have put something in here like guest starring Ghost Rider or something. But he really did the guest star with Johnny Blaze. He never appeared as Ghost Rider. Yeah. Ghost Rider isn't in there. Yeah. So, I thought it was kind of odd that Son of Satan or Damien didn't like get any like supernatural vibes from Johnny. Like he didn't sense any Zarathos in him or nothing like that. He just like here is man and woman that Satan's holding. I'm gonna bust him out just to piss off my dad. But yeah, it's weird. And and Johnny just sitting there cowering the entire time, and it was odd. Yeah, it was odd. It's a very odd story. I'll have to say. So. Yeah. Um, Doesn't Damien Hellstrom know who Johnny Blaze is though? Like they know each other. His first Johnny, Damien Hellstrom's first appearance was Ghost Rider One. Yeah, but they never met um, in those issues. It, it, it was a subplot. But they never uh, met in Ghost Rider uh, uh, Okay, it's been a while since I read those. Yeah, they never met. Uh, again, it, it was they were setting this up, you know. Uh, Big Boogie says that he thinks thirteen <clears throat> should have been um, the uh, the cover. That is a cover. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, there you go. That's way mm -hmm. better. Right? Yeah, yeah. I I I, I <laughs> thought the same thing, Biggie. I thought the same thing, but. You know, it is what it is, man. I'd I'd say the cover in this book looks more like a splash page than it does like a cover. You know, yeah, what I mean? it, it seems like something yeah. you would see. Yeah, it does. And there is there is a cool page in there where the the dean. Well, we'll we'll get to that in a minute when we do the art. Gino, do you have the um? I do, I do, oh. and uh, they went with a three again, a little above average. Okay, all right. I think okay. that's what I think that's what Kenny and I had. I think. Uh. Yep. You yeah. did. Okay. So, Kenny, you'll have to put your scores in the uh, in the chat so I can. Yeah, put it in the chat, buddy. If if you if you can't come back in. All right. So next is indeed <laughs> the art. Um, and I guess since Kenny's not here, right? Because Mir Miracle, you went first. Genome, you went second, right? Yep. Okay. I don't know. Is on third. Yep. I don't know. Is on third. And um, what is it the uh, shortstop? Is I forgot one thing. I I got to do it in my head for, for remember all that. Lou Costello and, and Bud Abbott were geniuses. So the art, right? The interior art. Um, you know, again, I like Trim, right? I mean, he he's not in the upper echelon by any means of of um, of artists, but solid artists and and had a long career. Um, obviously, most well known for his incredible Hulk work. Obviously, he first drew Wolverine there, so he's got that going for him. But in this issue here, I think he's a little bit out of his comfort zone. Um, he's he tries, right? But you know, like he tries to make his the son of Satan, you know, as demonic as possible. Look at those Spock light eyebrows, the red eyes, and the um, pointed uh, by cuspids there. Uh, again, it, it's not bad, right? But, you know, you can tell that he, he's, he's trying to evoke a certain look for effect, right? And the inking here is really heavy. I mean, it's like Mike Royer kind of heavy, Klaus Johnson kind of heavy. And it, and sometimes works because of the shadowing involved. Other times it, it just seems like overdone inking. Um, there are a couple good, good pages here uh, of art, but I, the, the main problem I have is the inconsistency in the faces. Look at this here. It looks almost like Archie there. I mean, it, it's just a kind of an odd expression for him with those raised eyebrows again and those like flaunting cheeks, those like flying out cheeks. It's just odd stuff. Um, but this is good right here. I think this, this, this splash page which is what kind of what i inspired the cover i think you got some really evil looking horses there look at those eyes and the flames coming out of the nostrils um you know it, it it's not perfect but boy if you see that you know that's when he summoned them uh i think that's a pretty good uh splash page there and the story the his art shows the story well okay let me let me state that right but again, when you get to the specifics, I think uh, a lot of his musculature is a little overdone here and there. Uh, again, he's used to doing the Hulk, but you can't you can't do like look at the look at the muscles on the back here. 
You know, it looks almost like like he's bumpy. You know, like he's got some growths back there. It it's it's just does not really work as far as the musculature goes. Sometimes he does a very thin waist here, um, like there, very thin waist. You know, almost Robin's like, uh, which is not good because again the, the characters look sometimes a little bit too sweaty and too double jointed, and then you have like this Bella Lugosi entrance like here with the cape covering the, the, the nose and just have the eyes on the top of the head. You know, that's kind of a trope. I actually kind of like that, but it's kind of like homage-ish, you know. Um, again, storytelling, his art is good, but it's I think it's a little bit too blocky and a little bit too um, static, a little bit too rocky, I guess, for a character like this who's supposed to be more leaner, uh, a little bit more... Um, normal, shall we say. You know, you have a pentagram on his chest. Forget about normal there. And then you got Satan or Satan, I guess. Some people get offended with that. It's just a lot of Johnny Blaze kind of flames on him. And then you have this, another very, you know, dramatic, overdone pose here where he's trying to be fighting the imps. So again, you know, it's nothing terrible here. I think a lot of it is well done. His layouts are okay. Um, the story does flow. His art does flow with the story well, but I don't like his faces. Musculature is off here and there, but still, you know, I'm not going to kill it because it gets the job done. All right. And that is ultimately what you want in a comic. You want the art to be, to move the story along, to tell the story, not to be distracting. It's not that I wanted to give it a 2.5, but I, I really like that splash page and those horses. And, um, and some of the pose, you know, some of the the way that he he does the flame effects are actually pretty good. So I gave it a three. And that is what I gave it. <laughs> three. <laughs> All threes for him so far tonight. Yeah, yeah, a lot of threes tonight. Uh, I think I saw uh, Steve Whiting, the AOK master himself, is in here. Young Cold. Stone Cold. And my buddy Night Tiger Comics on Sunday, we're having a trivia, major league trivia contest against Charlton 66, Gray Man, and King of Comicdom on Night Tiger's channel. Be there because I am the fourth guy on there. <laughs> so if you want if you want to go rough. down, perhaps you want to be there. <laughs> All right. Mr. Miracle. How about you yes. You go next and tell us what you think, your opinion, your view of this Herb Trimpy masterpiece or piece of... Oh, well, like inconsistencies all through this whole thing. People's hair changes colors per panel. I can't believe you like these horses. <laughs> Look at those two horses. Like... They look like seahorses or something. They're, I don't know. Did not like the big splash page. I thought horses were weird. They're freaking me out. I got to change the page. Sorry. And that the effect? I guess, but <laughs> they're not freaking me out in a good way. It's not like I want to sit there and watch them. I thought it was lean that he, like, Satan's just all fiery. He's got no face or anything. He's just this big, like, let's blot it out red every. Like every other panel, it's just red, no face, no musculature. And then Son of Satan is just muscles on top of muscles, on top of muscles. And then he gets into kind of a long shot. And he's like this weird, weepy, I don't know. It's like he's too, it's, it, I think there was the wrong artist that they picked for this issue. Um, Herd Tramp is, you know, you said he's not upper echelon, that's for sure. And if you're trying to sell your first issue, I mean, he does have some notoriety because of the Hulk 181, whatever. And this 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 panel kills me. Every time I see this panel, all I can think of is like he's in some sort of like heavy metal, weird heavy metal band, and he's just like, <laughs> all, all right, too sexy for my fat. Hmm. All right, New Jersey, are you ready to rock? <laughs> Up. Yeah, 
<laughs> you know, it could, if he pulled out a guitar and started going or like wailing on that trident, I would have loved this comics like a hundred times more. I would have been like, that is awesome. I didn't know he was a heavy metal son of Satan because that would be much better. But yeah, there's lots of panels like this pretty like lax, right? Like let's kind of draw a body that's a little uneven um, and then just color it red with black and not even put a background. Yeah, I mean, he it looked like he put a lot of effort into those kind of weird looking horses and not a whole bunch. I've seen much better from Herb Trent, that's for sure. Like, I think, I don't know if he was just pulled in, if this was something he wasn't so into. Um, the coloring is better, right? He, uh, I can't remember who did that. Uh, Severin, Marie Severin. I, I like the coloring, but again, I think like the wrong inker with the wrong artist. Yep. Right, like a lot of this, they they used up a lot of red when they were printing this issue. That's for sure. <laughs> right, they, they were like, "I hope you're having a sale on red ink this month." Yeah. Um, so the, I, I I think the coloring, if it wasn't for the coloring, a lot of these characters would just be like totally bland and gone. Um, the giant weird seahorses that have like, and did you check them out in this panel here? Oh, it's hard to see. Yeah. Uh, such great anatomy there, Mr. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, uh, so the coloring was good. The inking was bad. The illustrations were, eh, at the best. The biker guys were good, kind of good looking. I noticed they took off all of the white supremacist stuff because they like yep. have all this white supremacist stuff in Ghost Rider 2. Yep. Pretty sure I remember that. Yep, you're right. So there, there must have been some editing or whatever going on here. I thought it was okay. Like I said, I liked the coloring, not the inking. Not the, the illustrations were meh. So I gave it the meh. I gave the interior two and a half. Nice, nice. Um, good, good point on the coloring. I forgot to mention that. I think the coloring was actually the best part of the art. Um, Marie yeah. Severin is really good at at those texture at those texture colors. Uh, you know, whether to, to give it a, a really good strike or to fade it out. He's, she's really good at that. Um, very underrated uh, part of the comic. Right? Yeah. Uh, Kenny, let us hit us with your grade in the chat there so we can see what you thought of this art, even though you can't explain it. But um, I, I really hope he spent the that. entire time we were talking, actually typing it out so he can now enter it. In yeah. Chat yeah. So if you want to enter, you know, you know, some kind of tone there, that's fine. You know, I think you can type up to 200 characters. So, you Remember, know, you still got a 30 second delay. You still got, <laughs> you got to wait for him for a second. He'll come in. Oh, man. Yeah, so Satan is cool. Yeah, this is a good one. Really good, a good point. Satan is cool, <laughs> but white supremacist crossed the comics code. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, I mean, yeah, they literally have Satan in this book, too. So, oh, man. Why didn't they oh. just use Mephisto? Like Mephisto existed at that point. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He I will say this. Mar Marvel has always gone through great pains, though. Even having Mephisto say it himself, I am not Satan. That's who you made me to be. That's what you call me, but that's not my name. You know, yeah. so he's they've always tried to differentiate him from the devil, even though he is a devil clone, obviously. Yeah. But I think they have, they, several, they have several Satans, you know, out I there in the world. I think now they've retconned everything down into just him. Have they? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think Demonic Son of Satan Antheon. is no longer Son of Satan. He's Son of some demon or something. One of the arch enemies of um, Mephisto was Satanish. Set, I don't know how you say it. He yeah, was another Satanic. like nether nether demon too, big guy. Yeah. Him and they were like equal in power. So, yeah. Yeah. and they had Mephistopheles as, as well. <laughs> I mean, all... It was like a big uh, trifecta, and then of course you got uh, uh, Sidorak. He's he's right there, the same kind of being and very devil like and. Did you get Kenny's grade there, uh, Gino? Can we see it? Can we see it? Oh, he's he's typing stuff. Hold on. No, he, it's on the it's on the screen there. Okay, yeah. our grades too. Yes, yeah. I got it now. Yeah, he also says right. the <laughs> definitely inconsistent. Some great panels, but plenty of sloppy faces and anatomy. Hated the lazy drawing of Satan. Yep, you guys kept saying that. Also, there's a reason you don't see many characters with no shirts and a cape. It's an odd design. Very odd design. I agree with that. 
I totally agree with that. <laughs> All right, guys. Now it's time for you, the fifth grader, to give us your take on the interior art. I don't get it a show turn. You good amounts of it. So I think you can opine <laughs> on this particular category. Um, and again, one to five or zero if you thought it was just absolutely trash. Um, but otherwise, and, and halves in between. And we'll keep chatting and digressing. Are you afraid I'm going to give it a good score? You'll let me speak? Oh, is it your turn? No, it's oh. all right. It's okay. Oh, sorry. I'll, I'll let... Uh, you may got a good Gino over chat. Yikes. I'll let Kenny speak for both of us. No, no. no sorry, sorry. Go, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. Uh, I, out, I got totally discombobulated. Uh, actually, if you want to, if you want to minimize me, if someone wants to hold up the book real quick on just a couple pages, um, I'll try, I, I won't get too much into this. But um, what do you got? The page six. Oh, hold on. Let me let me put miracle up here. Well, actually, yeah. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. You got the original, don't you? I got the original. Yeah. Don't don't put ticks or nothing in there. Oh. <clears throat> six. Okay, so. Shrimp has obvious issues with anatomy, right? I said that in the Hulk 181. It's here, but it's, he's a pretty good storyteller, I'd say. Look how he's pointing the trident at this moon, right? Doesn't seem, seems kind of innocuous. Plus, that looks really good, by the way. He's highlighting that it's nighttime, but it, in the daytime, he mentions right here that he's going to turn back into whatever his human form is. That's a nice little bit of storytelling there. Right. Uh, there's a couple different scenes like that in this book that I really dug. I like the calf shot down there. This is one of the better pages of the book, I think. But man, stay away from his face. Whoo, Lord have mercy. That's bad. It's <laughs> awful. It's like Mr. Fantastic meets, um, what was it? Uh, Firefox or whatever his name was. It just doesn't work. Um, in fact, all of his faces are, are pretty, pretty bad. bad. Maybe the biker leader was okay. But um, yeah, that, that was bad. So it's 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 a game of inconsistencies. Um, yeah, there it is. The vampire uh, amphibian horses. I kind of dig them somewhat. There was another good panel. I think it's... Good one. Hold up here. Um, give me just one second, and I'm just gonna talk it like two pages, but I gotta find it. I'm I'm digital here. Where was that at? Okay, um, page 18, and this is something I'm gonna kind of compare this to more modern comics and how things have devolved some since then. Just look at this page. There's nothing too extraordinary here. And yes, there's the lazy Satan, but just look how dense this page is. Like if you get to a modern comic, it looks flat. It looks very uncluttered and busy. Some people might like that, but of course a lot of that dialogue doesn't, does help push it in a little bit, but I'm just saying Trump is very good at making a densely drawn book. It, it, everything has a shape. Everything has weight and texture to it, which is kind of nice. Um, you know, say what you will about Zanatti, which is really does come and go, especially the waist area of Son of Satan. It goes from uh, about a size eight <laughs> to a men's 40 at times. Just depends on the mood, I guess. But, you know, there's always depth to these pictures. You know, there's stalagmite in the front. Um, you know, the cave is shown like pulling off into the background. Uh, there's a, a place there where the imps are coming for him, and he fully draws like eight or nine imps on there and they're from the back. And it looks pretty good, you know. That's more than he had to do. So for a lot of the defects, that's the one right there, that panel right there. So while there's a lot of defects to like technical aspects of it, I like, you can tell he spent some time on this, right? Yeah. He was probably working at the limit of what he could do, but he did it. And I think it's, the book is better for it. I'm torn between three and three, five. I'm going to go ahead and give it a three, five, just because I think that, he tried. I really think he tried. He didn't phone it in. He just, this is an artist, I think, working at the absolute best of his ability, and he gave it his all. So I'll give it a three five. I like it. It's dense. I think modern comics from the 90s on could definitely learn from books like this just for the fact that it's like it gives your eye something to look at, you know, other than the next word bubble and, you know, the next fancy pose and all that. So I think he tries to be a lot like, like Adams or Busema. It just doesn't have their talent you know it's no shame we can't who else could be like those guys you know very few people so i give it 3.5 it's probably more worthy of a three but i do like the effort i think he put into it wow okay there is no try looks like our grades are all over the place <clears throat> do or do not there is no try 
That was in Star Trek too, wasn't it? Yeah. No. Okay. Now, uh, guys, I'm sorry. I apologize. I skipped Gino. <laughs> I Listen, I'm 56 now, so you know maybe dementia setting it. I don't know. I forgot. So you will be so kind to re-enter your grades for the art, and uh, you'll have my <laughs> my appreciation for you know the neurons not firing too well, you know, at this point in my life. Um, but so we had 3.5, 3, 2.5, 3, and 2. Oh, uh, right. sir. Let's see what we got. Uh, art. Yeah, 2.5, two, 2, 3, and 3.5. So we ran the gamut between 2.5 and 3.5. All right. So let me. I, I was really set on the 3. I mean, I, I don't think I, I, I was like, no doubt about that one, you know? Yeah. And, and like I said, and while you're tabulating scores here yeah. in the chat, Look at a more modern book and see how sloppy and slipshod it seems compared to books of this era. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just, I don't know. The books seem so much more denser in the art back then than they do from yeah. like 2000 on. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. I didn't, I didn't even think of that, but you're absolutely right. I, actually, it's kind I of an intangible a, thing, but. Yeah, I just read a, a modern book the other day, which I got in somebody, um, one of those um, wins that I got. And I noticed that I was like, man, it's like a few figures and then just some kind of, kind of like a background which is barely there. Um, yeah, I see that a lot. Right. There's not a lot of not a lot of those little details that you see in the bronze and silver age. It's computers. Right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's different when you got a pencil in your hand and you're you're touching the paper and you're connecting mm -hmm. to the art. You know what I mean? Right. It just seems so flat, like, and. You know, I think if, uh, you know, artists back then, especially guys like Basem or something, hey, this panel looks a little uh, a little bland or flat. Let's throw a cauldron in the front somewhere <laughs> or a smoking yeah. brazier somewhere. They just did it, you know. Or some birds or something, you know, just whatever. Let's put these trees. But, yeah, it's like I, I find that like a lot of the, the modern stuff is a little more sparse. It's not that it's bad. It's just different, right? Like it's evolved. And yeah. art is always evolving into the the 21st century right and that's that's just sort of uh just sort of the way that the you know, modern artists kind of do it in this in this era and there's nothing wrong with it and some of the modern artists are amazing right and i think the storytelling now is better than it used to be and i think the dialogue of characters is better than it used to be but it doesn't give me the warm and fuzzies like it used to you know I mean? <laughs> you like, warm and fuzzies? What's that? Oh, I, I didn't know you got warm and fuzzies up there in Canada. I have a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I got warm and fuzzies in Canada once, but uh, we don't talk about that on PG shows. So. Oh, okay. PG-13, this show. I wrestled a bear. Oh, boy. Gino, yeah. did you, um, are you doing that? Are you want me to shout them out to you? I already done, my friend. All See, right. I'm a lot better than that comic head fool you always got running the app this, man. <laughs> I take initiative. I don't wait. All right. Uh, what do we chat. got? Coming in with a very sensible three again. Three is the, the mantra of the chat tonight. Yeah. We got two threes yeah. and a three five. So just a little bit above the middle of the road. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, he says uh, <laughs> they're, they're called huskies. <laughs> oh, they mush when they're told. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Hey, Alex, how you doing, buddy? All right. So, okay, we finished that one, right? That's it, right? Nobody else goes, right? That's it. We got Kenny in there. We got all of us. Okay, perfect. Don't diss the eight. <laughs> don't diss the eighty-four abacus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kenny, we would never do that. Gino, oh. you know Gino. He loves you. He loves you. Did you see that? I actually talked unruly up a, a full point five. Look at that. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know you could move the needle like that. Wow. Oh, man. And Wayne won't cut me no slack if you don't agree. <laughs> All right, guys. Let's, let's, let's bring this home. Uh, concept. All right. Oh, so, this is really tough, I thought. This was – I really – I went like two-point differences at some point during the concept analysis in my head, right? Yeah. Um, so – Let's get into it. Let's. I don't even know what to say anymore about this. I'm going to start with Miracle because I'm still not totally sure what I'm going to say, right? But when you're talking about concept here, we're talking about not so much the specifics of the story art, but really 
the creation of the comic, right? What was behind it? Was it what was the impetus behind it? Was it, you know, they're all to make money. Don't get me wrong, but it, it, was there something novel about it? Was there something that that unusual about why it was conceived? Um, what was the impetus for for making this comic the way that it was? It's kind of a, a an ethereal concept, but uh, well, it's, I, I use the, the word in the definition, which is a no no, but but we want to see the the sort of like the um, the uh, the un the unexplainable to a sp to a specific degree about why this comic exists. Okay, so like I said, I'm still m mulling things around, so I'm going to use my power here as the guy doing the screen and hit over Mr. Miracle and ask him to start the concept. Ask me to start? Yeah. All right. Uh, so I think I kind of touched on a little bit when I went off about the cover. And um, yeah, like I said, in 1971, they relaxed the code and they started bringing out all these monster books. And this oh, was... Let me, let me make it big. I'm sorry. It's okay. That's why I was kind of like, are you asking me? Yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not with it right now. I don't know what's up. <laughs> That's fine. Right um, so, yeah. So, they, they started coming out with all these monster books, and a few of them were hits, right? Like, you had Dracula, and you had, you know, the Ghost Rider and stuff. And they're like, okay, what other monsters can we make? And they tried to make this and pass it off. But it was just way too over the top. I mean, like I said, this would not fly... If you went to the uh, editors at Marvel now and said, I want to make a Son of Satan comic book, I doubt that they would be okay with that, right? And especially with Disney and everything behind it. They may bring, you know, Damien Hellstorm, Son of Satan, into a movie as a character, but there will never be a Son of Satan movie, I can tell you that much. <laughs> um, yeah, I just don't get it. Like, why would you, why would you risk, like, people freaking out about your subject matter of your book by doing this. There's lots of other monsters they could have brought in that would have helped Ghost Rider, but it's it's fine. It's fine. Uh, I didn't like the concept. I don't, I, I don't like, like, this guy is just way too anti, anti-hero. And then when you read the book itself, it's like, he's not really, though, right? Like, it doesn't even hurt anybody, really, in the entire book. So, yeah, the concept of this book, I gave it a two. I was not impressed with the, the concept. Yeah, I get it. Right? You want to have a, like a character that bolsters Ghost Rider kind of in the same vein, you know, matches into his character, which is a good idea, right? Especially if Ghost Rider's popular, but picking this guy and picking this title of the book, no. No, no, no. Two. Two. Okay. Okay. I, I see where you're coming from, I think. I see where you're coming from. I um two two was in my range so uh all right Gino I'm I'm still I'm still I'm still splitting hairs over here so again I'm using my uh, authority here as uh, running the stream to kick it up to you I will go next though I'll leave, I'll leave Kenny for last I, I'm not gonna do that to him what did you think about this concept buddy hmm. concept is an interesting one I'm just thinking about the, I was trying to think of some snarky require. Uh, repartee there but it, it wouldn't come to me anyway thanks for pushing this upon me um concept is interesting kind of like what dave was saying there son of satan let's talk about the title all right the key rule in business is not to turn off half your clientele right and, mm -hmm. and not to wax poetic this is what a lot of politics will get your products right if you get too political on something or you get too offensive on something, you just turn off an entire segment. Call the book Damien Hellstrom or Hellstorm, right? That's a cool name by itself. And there really wasn't a whole lot of titles that used the actual name of the character. So I think that would have been a nice touch. You know, Son of Satan, you're going to turn off every religious parent because they're the ones buying the, the, the comic for the kid for the most part. Uh, any kids that are raised in very strict, uh, you know, religious households they're not going to buy this book just doesn't make sense from a business standpoint right now i do like the idea that they kind of push the envelope a little bit and they tried something completely different and wacky and they did try to have kind of a looks like they're really trying to push hard for the supernatural bent thinking that was where the direction was going to go um you know to varying success uh but so i can give kudos for what they were 
maybe envisioning, but man, a title says it all. If you have a car, it could be the greatest car. We're talking like, you know, a 351 Cleveland balance and blueprint engine, you know, in a Mustang or something. Right. And then you call it, you know, the turd it's no one's going to buy it. So branding <laughs> means a lot. You know what I mean? It's just it, I'm oversimplifying things from my economics teacher right now is rolling over in his grave if he's dead, but you got to be so careful with that stuff. And I think this was just a good idea, Ferry, that didn't get put in check enough. It's like, all right, this should have got to about the first level of editing. It's like, all right, that title has got to change. We like the character. We like what you're trying to do here. Do something different. Um, I'm not going to totally crap on it, though. I'm going to be a little bit better to it than Dave was. I'm going to give it a 2.5 because I, I do like them. They were trying to create a, like another sub universe, you know, that ties in with their main universe, like I said, more on the supernatural bend. You know, they went through the cosmic phase. Now they're getting to the supernatural things. And I, I dig supernatural stuff. I think it's cool. Um, and the character itself has an interesting idea. It's like he wants to depose Satan. There is a nice dynamic here. We don't know what he wants to depose him for. We don't know why he's mad at him yet. We'll find out later on. But So I can kind of dig that concept too. So while it was kind of poorly executed... I think there's a little bit of promise there and uh, a change of name would have probably bumped me up a full point. So 2.5, um, just ill-conceived cover and trade dress and naming. That was, that was the biggest sin this thing ever did. So interesting. You use that, those choice of words. Man. <laughs> you can't um, help it. Every, everything, as soon as you read that title, this whole book is religious, right? There's religious connotations to it. And oh, yeah. So that could just turn off an entire segment of, of potential buyers, and you just never do that. Yeah, yeah, good points. Honestly, you both, you both, of course, come up with really good points. Um, I guess I'm next, so <laughs> here we go. <sighs> Man, um, I, I, you know, I think like a lot like this character, I'm of 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 two of two spirits in a sense, and and Gina was right. If, there's, there's symbolism throughout here. Satan himself says that you are of my flesh, not of my spirit. And I kind of feel that the character, that duality in his identity, you know, in, in one sense, he's, he's a good man trying to, to do godly things. And then you have this guy who, you know, is, is Satan's enemy, but doesn't seem to be hu uh, humanity's friend. Right. So again, very morally ambiguous and maybe, not even that ambiguous, maybe just a little bit more evil than we can tolerate. Now, th this is really his first iteration. Later on, they soften him quite a bit, but I can only judge it based on what this is, right? And yeah, I mean, uh, you have to remember though, guys, that right around this time, there was a movie called The Exorcist, all right? I think it came out this summer, Maybe a little bit after, but again, the the in, in this time at this time there was a lot of mysticism, uh, kind of movies and and pop culture, et cetera, et cetera. And like like you guys said, um, Dave said the, the miracle, the relaxation of the code kind of opened up other avenues for characters for Marvel, and they kind of try to slip this one in there. And again, Ghost Rider was like a first baby step because. Satan was involved, but still he wasn't, you know, a spawn of Satan. He was sort of cursed, basically. This one, he is the actual, or supposedly the, you know, the progeny of Satan here. Uh, so, and, and the pentagram on the chest, the trident, the, you know, the very demonic looking uh, eyebrows and face. And yeah, it's it's out there. It's, it's ballsy. I think Miracle said that. I agree with that. It's ballsy. Um, and I think I do like the idea behind the character that, you know, you, you can you can be a product of your environment, not necessarily, you know, your your genetics or, you know, where you come from. You can you can break through, you know, that the, where you come from to 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 be who you want to be, you know. But that's not really what comes clear here to me. It, it, it it's, it's so, they're, they're trying to make a character that is um, kind of anti everything anti-hero, anti-villain, and it's a little much for uh, to put into one issue for sure and to put into a concept that is going to go to a lot of children, secondly. So again, I'm torn because I think the idea is 
great, but the execution of it was a little bit short-sighted. Uh, and that's why, again, you know, later on they soft him and he got, he ended up going long into spotlight and getting his own title, which lasted eight issues. And then he kind of faded away a bit, went to the defenders and so forth. So again, I'm torn because the concept I think has legs um, and, and could have been, you know, if, if, if they had massaged it a little bit differently, could have, could have had a character which could complement Ghost Rider in a sense, or had some similarities, but sort of been more in the mystical realm and the more uh, ha ha handling demons. And that kind of did happen later on in Spotlight. But in this one, it doesn't come clear what the character is about. It's kind of, it's not only morally ambiguous, it's character wise, it's ambiguous. And that is not a good thing. You want to you want to know at least what it is you're dealing with. So again, torn. Good aspects, bad aspects. A sign of the times, yes, that they try to morph into a character. Good idea, yes, but the execution of it was a little bit too over the top and too stark for the audience that they're going to. So again, I'm I'm with I think Genome the same as you. Two point five. Um, totally torn here. Uh, I went from like. Two to four, um, uh, no, to 3.5 at times because there are so many good things here, but there are so many things that when you think about it, about what their audience is, just would be problematic down the road. So 2.5. All right. Yeah. I mean, hard to argue there. It's, um, it's a game of inches, they say. I think it's you're muted, Dave. I don't if you were talking. I wasn't talking. Uh, <laughs> that's impossible. <laughs> Everyone's talking to me all the time. <laughs> Kenny, give us your um, your grade here while we uh, discuss this a bit. Uh, a bold title and character. I'd imagine the shock value piqued kids' interest. Yeah, I agree. A book Little Jimmy may tuck under his bed. I did. And more mature readers would be curious at least to try out. Don't know the full story, but it's cool for Satan's sons to be rebellious and his dad and fight against him as long as long as anti-Satan Satan is not irresponsibility controversial, but Damien should be more pro-humanity. Agreed. 3.5. Wow. I, I wish he was on, I would be on here to have his spot because I'm sure he has some really good in-depth analysis on this. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, it is what it is. Um, you had a two, right, Dave? Two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah I, I, thought, I thought the Satan, like the father son kind of conflict here was also sort of a sub, you know, under the, a little bit under the surface uh, about relationships here. Maybe Friedrich has some issues there. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, is it Damien Hellstrom or Damien Hellstorm? I think it's gone back and forth, but I think Hellstrom, I think, is the what it ended up being. I thought it was Hellstrom. Was it? Yeah, I, I, I think, think it is. I think, some, Damien, I think some of, sometimes the letters mix, mix them up and we'll put Storm, but oh, yeah. Hellstrom is the one that mostly you get on there. I'm probably thinking of WoW from like uh, Garrosh Hellscream and stuff. So I get the Hellstorm in my freaking head. Steps from. <clears throat> okay, so we all went. Is that right? Damien is the anti antichrist. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. All right, so we all went, right? That's it. Just the chat. Yes? No? Yeah, we all went. We all went. We all went. Yeah, yeah. What are you guys leaving me out here to dry, man? Come on. No, sorry, I was reading the chat. <laughs> all right. Tell chat. me what to do. Oh. Yeah, you, you guys are like all of a sudden silent. I, I usually can't shut you up, and now you won't talk. Um, oh, and stay tuned. We're fixing to announce next week's book here shortly. Yeah, so. don't don't move because we still have the overall and the next week. Hey, Adrian APM, really funny video that you got to see of his unboxing. Uh, uh, I think it was today or yesterday. you got to see that video. All right, so give us your grades, guys, on the concept. Thank you, Jackson Roy Kirk. Did you think this was something that was, you know, you know, novel and something that really, you know, moved the needle or, eh, you know, like Kenny thought it was a little bit better than Mr. Miracle, obviously. 
Um, but what did you think? Did you think this was a high concept or really, you know, something you could have done without? It, it definitely couldn't have done without this. It's pretty lowbrow, man. See, I, 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 I wish Kenny was here. I mean, man, I miss his analysis on the concepts, man. It's, it's like, it's pandering to the lowest common denominator, right? When you're like, oh, we'll make it a controversial and we'll have kids hiding it under their beds and dads fighting. No, you don't want that in a comic book. Stop that. Stop that. I call shenanigans right there, right? Like, don't well, do that. But don't don't a lot of comic books now use a lot of sultry imagery anyway now? I mean, isn't that what it's more yeah, Michael Turner made a whole career on it, didn't he? <laughs> well, we could do a whole... Yeah, another graders know through the modern comic mm. take a look because I, I'll have some things to say about that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, when, people when like me remember that, in the Marvel swimsuit issues. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, mom and dad, this is part of Marvel. Oh, that's okay. It's got the comics code on there. I mean, it got to the point I think where like every comic in the early two thousands was like girls with big boobs and small costumes and every guy had a gun and he was shooting. It was like, it was a weird era of comics. Even Superman was using shotguns and pistols at Kimbo. Yep. Yeah. Like it's like, what? Why? Superman does not need a gun. Superman is faster than a bullet. <laughs> oh, you see, let, let's, let's, let's here. Let's the, our, our other creator. See, he agrees. 3.5 ballsy move by, by Marvel. I agree. It's a ballsy move, but just just based on that, I can't give it a three point five. You know, because yeah. it has to be more than than just courage here. It has to be does the concept have legs for the future, right? Like yeah, like okay, it is ballsy, but I think it was short sighted. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like it was not the best move, and this comic didn't last very long. It didn't sell very well, right? or his comic didn't. Marvel Spotlight went on for a long time. Oh, let's see. Well, maybe they maybe they could have done it something like uh, they normally would have done it. Okay, the trade dress is big, uh, Damon Hellstrom, small print underneath, son of Satan, or something like that. You know, or spawn of Satan, something different. But be, or just maybe not put Satan out there. <laughs> Beezlebub, something. You know. Yeah. Change it up. I mean, you call him Hellboy, right? Like just you Hellboy. Know, <laughs> print other than this. Um, right? Well, essentially, Hellboy is the same. It's the same backstory right he's the son of satan or he becomes satan or whatever and but we, i don't feel the same way about hellboy as i feel about him like this guy's way outside and that hellboy is pretty cool all right gino what do you got <laughs> well com uh, coming as a complete surprise uh to everybody uh chat gives us a three <laughs> wow. overall score wow. so let's gonna put i'll go ahead and tabulate their final right oh. now Wow, I mean, th this is, I think, one of the few times where the, the chat has really been above most of us. That puts their yeah. score at a three. <laughs> That's true, yeah, usually they're Usually they're there, than us. Yep. there, sometimes below, but not not usually so consistently high, which is great, right? I mean, that's great. Um, listen, uh, when, it, when it comes to this, when it comes to this comic, I think, depending on how your point of view is, it could really run a wide range because I, even I, I was kind of going back and forth. I was saying, you know, that's cool, but you know, like, like Miracle was saying that concept, is it really going to be something that you're going to be able to take going forward? And it's something that's going to not, you know, peeved a big part of your audience. And somehow yeah. it didn't for a, a long time for, Marvel Spotlight. I think he was on Spotlight until the high twenties, and then his own, his own title for eight issues. So at least two years past this, he was still around in his own title. Yeah, but you know they didn't get data as fast as we get them now. It would take a while before they realized mm -hmm. the world was selling very well. Sure. And shoot, I forgot. I had a, I had a good point, and then I forgot. But it's poor marketing. That's what it was. And Dave hit it right on the head. Mm -hmm. Because how are you going to have Son of Satan t-shirts and Frisbees and action figures and lunchboxes? You know, you go, you're not send a kid to school with a Son of Satan lunchbox. That's like <laughs> with the Ghost Rider. Oh, man. You can send it with Batman. You can send it with Wolverine, even though Wolverine's killed a lot more people than the Son of Satan has. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Lunchbox full of deviled eggs and deviled ham. Yep. There's only one person. There's only one panel in there where, and, and they don't even show it, but it looks like the trident is stabbing one of the imps. 
That's the only one I found where, and he was a, supposedly a demon who was already dead, right? But and they don't show penetration, blood, anything like that. So again, the the imagery as far as the concept is stark, but the actual execution in the comic is not very violent at all. This little panel here where he's getting stabbed. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of, like you said, you know, are you going to bark all day, little doggy? You're going to bite. Like, let's let's see some stuff. Yeah, right? yeah, that's a good analogy. Hey, Taylor Winder, welcome. Oh, thank you for the sub, Beta Ray, by the way. R real funny guy, Taylor Winder. You got to check out his uh, his videos. Funny, funny guy. Um, he, he's having a contest, too, by the way. Oh, okay, yeah. guys, so let's bring it in. Let's, let's do the overall, and let's get out of here and, and let Genome pick, uh, ask the chat what they want to see next. Fortnite, all right? Overall, real quick, um, I guess I'll start just because I've been on the back end on most of this stuff. Um, you know, again, uh, tough one to for me to sort of nail down here because I gave a pretty good score to the cover, and that's kind of like the weakest part in my scoring echelon, right? 3.5. The art, I think, was not great, certainly, but I think the story... Uh, telling elements of the art were pretty well. Faces I had a problem with. The, some of the anatomy musculature, a little bit distracting. Some of the effects were a little wonky but and a little dark on the inking. But the coloring, Miracle hit it on the head, was really well done. Kind of rescued a little bit of the inking, I think. Uh, story, you know, I, it, it has a lot of flaws, a lot of plot holes, you know. And, and in the Bronze Age, there was a lot of continuity like this that they would pull in stuff from left field or see this, but see this issue, see that issue. That's kind of lazy storytelling to me, though. You should at least have some little explanation or something that segues the plots together. Um, but I still like the con – it was still an entertaining story. Um, you know, sun versus Satan, Satan get, getting afraid of the sun and, you know, hightailing it, and then sour grapes trying to get him at the end. I thought it was a cool story, but a lot of plot holes. Three. Uh, concept, I just went through it. I'm not going to go through it again. 2.5. Overall, I'm going to go right where the average is out, and that's three. Because the cover was the higher, the concept was the lower, but the story and the art are the ones that I really focus on, and those were the, 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 high, the highest grades other than the cover, which, again, really is a three comparatively. So three. Better than average, could have been much better, actually, with a little bit of uh, better conceptualization of the character and a little bit tightening of the plot holes. But as it is, I think it's a worthy comic to pick up if you have the opportunity to. Okay, we're going to leave. We're going to leave Mr. Miracle for the end because he is a great closer. So. <laughs> Dino, what did you think about the overall here? All right, so overall, um, it's a book of averages, really, and I'm definitely going to let math decide this one because I'm, I'm really having a hard time placing what I feel about this book. Some parts I liked and intrigued me, and other parts left me kind of ambivalent, and while I found it interesting, I'm not sure if I found it exciting, but anyway, let's, let's get into it. Um, Cover is my weakest uh, aspect of this book. I gave it a 2.5. Uh, did some things all right. Did some things <clears throat> fairly poorly. Uh, just a game of averages. You know, for everything I liked, I found something I could nitpick. It, it did the job, though. It was all right. Maybe not a first good first uh, issue cover. That 13 you showed earlier was much better. Good number for that, too, right? Um, story, I gave it a much stronger mark. Uh, I gave it a 3.5, mostly because it did tell a fairly cohesive story. Uh, it left you maybe a little bit curious about the character. He was definitely a gray area kind of person. He was neither good nor bad, it seemed, but he had violent tendencies, even though he didn't really do anything violent, uh, at least not so much except for the imps. And then he, he had heroics about him, but he was only doing it for selfish reasons, and he really wasn't a hero. I don't know. Whatever the heck they were trying to do with this guy. It was still somewhat interesting, and of course, he led off with two Indians, so they kept that Marvel trope alive too. So three point five. Uh, to your art, uh, work workhorse workmanship. I mean, it's kind of a 
you can tell this guy got, got a lot of work and he had the, uh, he had his chops down. Uh, he is, you know, he's no, he's no Busama. He's not, he's none of the big names right at the time, but you know, he, he's serviceable to say the least. And he obviously put a lot of work into this book. I think, even though he got lazy on things like, like Satan, but you know, what are you going to do? Don't really have a blueprint other than Mephisto and keep drawing him over and over. So, but whatever, I mean, he could have some more creative things there, but I just like it. There's a lot of depth to a lot of his panels. I can dig it. So there was effort put in. So 3.5, um, concept i think was fairly poor um like i said um you know titles mean a lot and uh you know you just can't get past that in some ways i know they're trying to push the envelope be edgy maybe going for a more adult audience or as uh, another of my co-hosts here maybe going for the the kid hiding the magazine under the bed or something kind of thing but you know and, and like dave says you don't sell merchandise that way and you know people had captain america lunch boxes and stuff and iron man you know, toys or whatever. They're not going to have Son of Satan toys. You know, they may be able to sneak one comic book out from underneath mom and dad's uh, watchful eye, but they're not going to get a whole slew of things if that character ever got popular. So just poor decisions. So I gave it 2.5, but they did try something interesting with the character itself and the kind of uh, the whole father hating the son dynamic and vice versa. So I'm letting math decide this one. Uh, my numbers averaged out to a three. I think this book is probably a little more like a 2.5, but I'll go ahead and leave it at three because it did enough to at least pique my interest and it didn't offend me at anything. Like even my lowest score is a 2.5 and that's serviceable. That's right in the middle of the road. I've seen a heck of a lot worse in all aspects of this book. So while it didn't really, you know, excite me to any great degree, it was a worthy read and not a bad book though. And I'd say so 3.0. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Uh, there's a good comment here by Gore Vidal, um, and he's right. Um, it, maybe Starlin uh, would have been a, a a good a good artist for this one because he does have he does have a way of capturing the above street level characters, you know, more cosmic, more mystical characters like Warlock at some point with the um, the Church of Universal Truth, those kind of issues. Um, he had a really good way of, of, of molding the characters to the scenarios that they live in. Uh, so I agree. I think that would have been a good fit. <laughs> Jackson there. Uh, that was a good point, too. The um, trident thing. What was the idea of giving him a trident? <laughs> you know, is yeah. he a half-rate Aquaman? What is he? You don't give him a trident. You give him a, either a pitchfork or <laughs> something else. But an asymmetrical <laughs> trident makes no sense whatsoever. Make it a big flaming battle axe or something. I don't care, but yeah, that was kind it's of like a too. pitchfork, you know. Like yeah, it's 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 a derivation of his father's pitchfork. Oh, well, make it a pitchfork, damn it! Make it a cool one. Yeah, Frog gear. All right, so Kenny Kenny comes in with a three, mostly serviceable, but above average and unique. I agree with unique. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I agree with that. I don't know. I so the chat or cumulative cumulative grave with three as well, right, Gino? Yep. Okay. Do we got threes okay. across the board? I know we still have somebody here I to know. go. Yeah. We're about to I'm find out. This time, <laughs> Mr. Miracle, you are bringing in the rear of the rear, but we—that's because you are the best closer in the business. What did you think about the overall here? You keep calling me a rear. Uh, let her know about all this. Right. Well then, <laughs> I uh, wasn't very impressed with the title or the cover. Right, I don't like the horse. The horse rear. Speaking of, you know, being in the rear, um, wasn't very impressed with the inconsistency, heavy inking, and just like man, just weirdness of some of this. You know, some of these panels, like those horses. It's the, I can't. I can't look at them. <laughs> I gotta. I gotta turn them. They freak me out. They. They trigger me in some way. I don't know. Um, so the interior art mirror. Um, I did like the coloring. Like I said, the story. Big plot holes. And if you haven't read Ghost Rider number two, or one and two by this point, like, and you pick this up off the rack, you, it, it's. It, there's some big, big plot holes in that case, right? Like, so I don't like you know. Them sucker, you like, make sure you buy a ghostwriter. Well, why do I gotta buy that to you know get something out of this story and you know have the story be 
you know, a little more congruent in my head, right? Um, so the story lacked the overall concept of, you know, making, you know, anything to do with Satan, a main character in your book. Mm, that's not, you're not thinking ahead here, boys. You're just, you had too many gin and tonic at lunch when you're talking about this and you got Roy Thomas to agree to it. And next thing you know, he's got this on the shelf and he's getting calls from angry calls from people's moms. Why has my boy got this comic, Mr. Thomas? Right. So a little short sighted. Um, overall, it just, it was kind of weak in my opinion. It was tropey. It had, it, okay, we'll give it, I wouldn't even say, I can't even give it unique because there a lot of times when I was reading this, I'm like, isn't that kind of like back backstory of Dracula and a lot of stuff? And like, yeah. So I actually gave the overall deuce. Wow. And he broke. He broke with it. He broke, he I, broke from the averages. That's for sure. Yep. I might buy number 13. And actually, I, I did something while I was, you know, on my own here. I looked at the calendar from October of 1973. Mm -hmm. And this book would have come out on October 3rd. But it, the next one, number 13, would have come out on October 31st, four weeks later. Right? It was one of those long months. It's actually bi-monthly, so it was January. Oh, they missed the opportunity. Could have had it. They had it. Yeah. Not, not it yeah. So maybe I'll change my overall to a 1.5 for missing Halloween. What are you we need to do in? Right? Like, no, 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 it'll stay too. Oh, okay. You Man. know, like I was just like that, like, you know, talk about missing the ball. Right? Like, why not have the Son of Satan comic come out on Halloween? I guess Marble Spotlight had to come out on a certain day. Everybody would be expecting it, but Odd, 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 odd. I didn't. I, I really didn't like that. It just feels like a chapter of a Ghost Rider story. Like it's just weird. Look, look at these observations here. Satan had four tongs. Son has three. I should have. Uh, I should have stuck <laughs> Spider Man in there somewhere. That would have helped. <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's the only trope they're missing, right? <laughs> he should have fought Spider Man at some point. <laughs> yeah, I would. I, I would definitely not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have gone out of my way to get the next issue. That's for sure. I don't, I, you know, maybe maybe as a a zygote, which I was at the time. Was I, was, I might have had a, a more immature view of it, but not not even not not even a a, a baby a zygote. All right, yeah, all right, true. guys. Um, let's bring it home. Um, genome has, is going to be up next. So remember. Sub up, Genome Presents, hit the notification bell, because in two weeks, we're going to do another Grader's Notes, and he's going to let you pick from a few options. All right, so this is this is going to be a two-parter, but I want to make it real fast. I'm going to put it to the chat right now. Either type in one or two. Would you rather see a book from Secret Wars one or two? Put it in there right now, and then we're going to choose from one other book other than that. Do, 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 do. We'll give you about 30 seconds. So far, two is in the lead. Two is in the lead. Two. Oh, Who's one's, clo two? one's closing in. All right, guys, got about 15 seconds left. What's it going to be? Oh, oh, one's getting closer. 10 seconds. Come on, people. Let's hear it. Let your voices be heard. All right, five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. All right, so looks good. Looks like it's going to be uh, Secret Wars 2. But you surprised everybody. So here are the two books to choose from. All right. Uh, by the way, the book you turned down to review was this one. No. <laughs> one, maybe my top three covers of all time, but cover doesn't always make the book, but it's also probably the best issue of that entire run, too. Still trying, to, trying to sway the tide here. <laughs> Too late now, though. So here are your choices. X-Men 280, Pyrrhic Victory. For those of you who don't know what that means, it's a, it definitely ties into the book. And from Secret Wars 2, issue number two. I love Beyonder on this cover, by the way. As amorphous as he is. 
So there's your choices. So chat, tell us what you want to see, and we will review to my channel in two weeks time. And that's it. It's neither an option. <laughs> so <laughs> like that. It's neither an option. Or you guys can always have a writing campaign and put Secret Wars one in. We, we we can't pick all winners all the time because it would be not it would be boring. Yeah, I know? guess I guess that's why I picked. What, what you know, the, did you see the Razor episode, Gore? I mean, come on, that 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 thing. I, oh, he still has it. I was gonna say, I bet yeah. you he, he got rid of that thing. There. Well, it's down here somewhere. I don't know what I do with it. We got rid of it yet, but it's gonna go soon. <laughs> Oh, look at Kenny. Kenny, you're you're part of this panel. You don't have a say. Yeah, That's make sure great. to type in either Secret Wars or X-Men so we know. <clears throat> Pretty good action. Yeah. Looks like it's going back and forth quite a bit. Secret Wars. Secret Wars, as much crap as it gets from some people, some parts were pretty cool. I liked Beyonder, like, and especially in the third one where he's like having like almost like a midlife crisis. He doesn't know what to do, man. He doesn't know if he yeah. should help, he should not help. And then like and then all the time, Mephisto is like working these machinations in the background, trying to steal his powers because all the cosmic beings are afraid of him. You know. Oh, well, there was some cool stuff. I liked when he turned like that building into gold, and like, mm -hmm. oh. and then there was the whole big drama with Spider Man stealing the notepad. Yeah, yeah. I, I, Secret Wars Two has lots of good things about it. it. Has lots of not so good things too, though. I can yeah. tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was one of the great cash ins, that's for sure. All right, let's let's give him a thirty seconds genome, and yep. we'll. Bring this puppy home so we can get under two hours here. You now have 30 seconds. Um, yeah, in interesting. I, I think it's going to be interesting if we do Secret Wars 2 because I have a lot of opinion on the concept on that. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, Secret Wars 2. I've, I've never read that Batman or that X Men issue. I know I, I never know. read that. I was trying to pick I, books that I, I figured maybe you guys would already have so you wouldn't have to go hunting for them or anything, you know? I got like 10 comic shops around me. But, you know, oh, that's, I always forget. You're not like me. <laughs> yeah. I have, I have one, and it's like. I, I have a bigger collection than that comic shop. Yeah. We shouldn't even call them comic shops. Right? They're just pop stores, is all they are. But. Yeah. <laughs> No, I went to like the one up the hill and I was like, oh, you guys sold out of that one. And they're like, yeah, sorry. That's so I just bought some bags of boards and then I went to the other one that's at the bottom and then across the bridge. And they had it. And I was like, hey, Andrew. He's like, hey. Okay. Uh, right, Mac so Musings. What's, what's the tally? I don't know. What's, let's see. Okay. Okay. He's got it there. So let me look here. Uh, I'm going to have to move my lips here. I'm counting. So. Let's start with X Men. One, two, three, four. Um, Jackson, I, I think four. if you're if you're counting on those to retire too, um, you know yeah. they, that movie where they shrink the people so that three, they can fit four. into a little bitty town. That's what you've been looking for. Yeah, let I me mean, recount this. And we have the funniest chat sometimes. <laughs> They're making it really hard on me here. <laughs> Like sometimes I'm reading the chat when I'm I can't read the chat when I'm talking, otherwise I start cracking up, right? <laughs> so Gino can do an essay on the meaning of pyric. If someone wants to count this, make sure I'm getting it right, but it looks like <laughs> Gino. Fifteen hundred words on it looks like Secret Wars is winning here, but some yeah, people that's, mix that's things together that are making it hard for me here. <laughs> yeah, I have Secret Wars by one. Yes. Okay. So, Secret Wars, it is. So, um, have your Secret Wars number two ready, or at least read it ahead of time to see if you do enjoy the story or not, and want to see buildings turn to gold and uh, beyond your chumming around with mobsters. So, good times. I don't think he. I don't think he golds the building in that one, does he? Is it the third one or this one? I can't remember. It might it be at the end of the first one or the beginning of the third one, but yeah, it's it's somewhere in there. So. Oh. But, so good times, good times. Um, yeah, you want to do an essay. <laughs> so that's it. All right. All right Secret gentlemen. Wars number two, number two. Secret Wars 2-2 two, two for, in 14 days, Genome's channel, same hour, I believe. Hopefully, Kenny will have resolved his internet issues by then and can be a full participant instead of a half episode participant. But we miss Same. you, Kenny. We, we miss your, your input. You, uh 
in, especially in that concept, you're you're this great at, at explaining those. So let's get out of here, guys. Chat, you're fabulous as always. You're the best in the business, and we love you. We couldn't do this without you. Mr. Miracle, Genome, what can I say? Nothing but love for you too, and Kenny, and Unruly, of course, as well. Anything you want to say before we go out of here? Anything you got pressing on your channels that you need to get off your chest? Huh? <laughs> Dawn the Dead review coming up probably in a week or so. Oh. Uh, the next movie review I'm going to be doing. I, I did uh, see that, by the way. Oh, did you watch? Yeah, that's right. You watched it. That's right. I, I watched it. it was, it's, it's actually on YouTube in high def. That's um, true. It is. Much yeah. higher def than the original. Right. So everybody in the chat, go to YouTube and Google Dawn of the Dead Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. Watch it. And then go back to Genome's channel when? Like in a week or so? Yeah, about a week or so. I think that was the unrated version or the uncut version too. The uncut version. Yeah, it's long. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. No, I actually I got some too, of course. So this uh, this week I'll drop the second half of my Star Wars undervalued picks. I'll give you guys a little taste right here since we're going there. This is the uh, twenty. Ooh, or I don't know the date offhand, but this is Darth Vader. Um, Number 14, which has the first cameo appearance of Ahsoka Tano in canon, right? So the first one that counts, according to the storyline. And you can find this little guy for around $5 in most comic book shops. So I'll have a whole bunch more, not just my usual five. There's all kinds of Star Wars books. And as we know, Star Wars is just getting red hot, man. And you should be, if you're... One add value to your collection, you really should be thinking about putting Star Wars books into your collection. So that's all I gotta say about that. There you go, a little teaser from Mr. Yeah. Miracle. Was it your last was it your last um video that did all Star Wars books or was it the one before that? No, it was my last video and this was a part two. Okay, yeah, it really really went in depth on five really important books. Yeah, and uh yeah, I'll have a whole bunch more. Man, I could do a part three. I might do a part three. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, for me, I'm going to be I, – I think Gray Man is going to have his birthday stream on Saturday. Uh, hey, happy birthday, Gray Man. That's right. Or as they say where you're from, happy birthday, mate. Happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday, mate. He's going to be 51, I think. So happy birthday, buddy. I'm going to try to jump on with you. And on Sunday, Night Tiger Comics Channel, I'm going to be with the Gray Man, Charlton 66. And, of course, Lawrence can comic them, and we're going to go trivia crazy. So check us out. Go over there because I think you have to vote. Um, there's a, there's, and there's a bunch of prizes he's giving away as well. So go over there on Sunday night, Night Tiger, Saturday for Gray Man. And that's it. I'll see you in 14 days. Everybody, be blessed and be back. Bye.